Now as we all know, Major League Baseball has been around for hundreds of years. Since the sport first started, people have got to witness legendary players play the game. Babe Ruth, Barry Bonds, Nolan Ryan. These are just a few big names who have played the sport. Since the sport has been around for so long, the game has changed like crazy over time. Before the late 1940s, baseball was a sport that was full of white athletes as it was during a time when segregation was a big deal. It wasn't until 1947 when Jackie Robinson played for the Brooklyn Dodgers, broke the color barrier, and the rest was history. If it wasn't for Jackie, the color barrier would have most likely been a problem for a longer period of time. It was thanks to Jackie that that did not happen. Well, what if I told you you've been believing a lie? and that Jackie Robinson was not the first African-American MLB player. A good place to start off is by looking at the Negro Leagues, a league first established in 1920 that consisted of African-American baseball players. The Negro Leagues was able to create some legends of their own such as Satchel Paige, Josh Gibson, and Monte Irvin. These guys started their careers in the Negro Leagues, but once the color barrier was broken or more African-American players were playing in the MLB, these guys came in. But if you look at their baseball careers, it took them years to make it to the MLB. Page didn't play until the 40s, Gibson never had the chance of playing in the majors, and Monte Irvin mostly played in the 50s. The point is, times were tough then. These guys had to deal with plenty of disadvantages just to hope at playing in the major leagues. But then in 1947, one man broke the color barrier. Jackie Robinson signed with the Brooklyn Dodgers after playing for the Kansas Monarchs. Jackie's career was sensational. It wasn't just the fact he was a beast on the field. He brought people together and showed the world how black lives matter. How the world should not be segregated because of one's skin color. Instead, bring people together to appreciate each other no matter where they're from. Jackie Robinson was the man that broke the color barrier for baseball. Or was he? I would like to introduce you guys to a man by the name of Moses Fleetwood Walker. You're probably asking yourself, who? Who is this guy? Well, let's take a quick look at his story. Moses Fleetwood Walker was born and raised in Mount Pleasant, Ohio. This was a town that served as a sanctuary for runaway slaves. Walker's childhood was a rough one. He was moving around a lot and wasn't able to live a normal life. When Walker was in college, he attended Oberlin College, where he majored in philosophy and arts. So how exactly did Walker fall in love with baseball? What's his story when it comes to playing the sport? Well, we don't know. This was back in the 1800s, and Walker was not well known. So it wasn't easy to find info on him as he played baseball centuries ago. So his story on how he started baseball remains a mystery, but we do have a theory. Baseball was a popular sport at Oberlin's campus, and it was believed that Walker decided to go play with the others. He was the catcher and leadoff hitter for the team. Walker's name started to buzz around the campus as soon as the school's newspaper, the Overland Review, noted how Walker's ball handling ability was good and he had plenty of pop in his bat as he crushed homers. So now that you have a bit of an idea of what he did before the big leagues, let's get to the main part of the story. In mid-1883, Walker decided studies were no longer for him and that baseball was the move. Walker signed his first professional contract with the Toledo Blue Stockings, a team in the American Associations. Stats weren't as accurate back then, except he had a 263 batting average with 40 hits and 23 runs scored. Walker was injury prone as a catcher, but if you think about it, it's not surprising. The average catcher wore this behind the dish in the 1800s. I mean, let's be honest. How is this going to protect a player? The equipment wasn't as protective as it is today, so players got injured a lot more. This is also why Ray Chapman passed away. If helmets were around then, he would have survived. But anyways, back to Walker. So Walker played for the Stockings, a team that was in the American Association, which was considered to be the American League back then. Moses Fleetwood Walker was technically the first African American baseball player. So how did the league react to Walker playing for them? When Jackie entered the MLB, fans were not holding back to criticizing him. As for Walker, it was the same thing, and maybe even worse. Before one of Walker's games, the league debated to ban all colored players from the league, but the proposal dropped and Walker was able to continue playing. People were so mad about Walker being in the league, that a team's manager said he would not play if Walker was in the lineup. Imagine if someone said this today, it would be chaos. Not only that, 
but the stalking's manager received a letter saying that a mob of 75 men would kill Walker if he tried to take the field. Because of that, he did not go on the trip with the team. Although Walker was dealing with plenty of controversy, his career was looking like it was in a pretty good spot. He had a good role on the team, but the only problem was that plenty of people threatened him. Walker's MLB career would sadly end after 1884, but it wasn't because of his playing style. Well, not the main reason. In 1885, the Toledo Blue Stockings folded, meaning they no longer existed. Because of this, Walker had to find another way to get back to the majors, but it would take a miracle. After the feedback he got from being in Toledo, to not putting up a spectacular performance, it wouldn't be easy. Walker just didn't have the skill and remind you again he was living in an era where segregation was a big deal. Imagine having to prove to a team you are good enough for playing for them, but also hoping the team is pleased to pick you and not shame you for your skin color. It was just too hard for Walker, and because of that, he retired from the league in 1888. After baseball, Walker went on to become a successful businessman and inventor. In 1891, according to the Massachusetts Institute of Technology, he invented an outer casing for an artillery shell that used gunpowder instead of compressed air. Unfortunately, this invention did not spark much interest from other people. He went on to co-own a hotel with his brother Wendy and managed a local theater. Walker would pass away at 67 years old in 1924 from lower pneumonia. Since technology wasn't as elite in the 20th century, Walker could not survive. Today, it is infrequent to die from this infection. But in the end, we can say that Moses Fleetwood Walker was technically the first African-American baseball player to break the color barrier. Although this occurred in a time where the sport of baseball was completely different and Walker wasn't very well known, he technically did it. And while he is not well known in today's society, we can all agree that hearing about this story was pretty cool.